So we're gonna dive straight in here and look at the intro solo that I just played there in the beginning of that clip. This is what Clapton uses to start the song off and really kick it off with a bang. It's a very, very cool solo, which is gonna introduce us to some interesting techniques and some interesting movements between the second and first shapes of the A minor pentatonic scale. So if you're in the position of trying to sort of navigate and move between those, this is gonna give you some great reference material for doing so. Not only that, but this intro solo is gonna introduce us to that idea which I spoke about earlier in the course of taking sort of fundamentally the same ideas and just altering them ever so slightly to create something new, but different enough that it's still interesting and really cool. And that's exactly what Clapton does here. Now this intro solo we can break down into two parts and we're gonna look at the first part now. I've switched to a clean tone rather than using the kind of more overdriven tone that I was playing in the sort of playthrough there. And I would urge you to do the same when you're learning and practicing this as well. From my perspective, I'm doing this to sort of help you see and hear what's happening a little bit better without any distractions from the overdrive. But from your side, I recommend doing that because overdrive is amazing for many different reasons, but part of what it can do is sort of blur the distinction between the notes and soften inaccuracies and mistakes. When you're playing with a totally clean tone, you have to be very precise because there's sort of nowhere to hide from little scuffs or, 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 or little movements between the notes that aren't quite right. Overdrive helps to mask those. And so what we want to do is build up a very clean and precise style of playing and then add the overdrive on top of that just to sweeten things up and add sustain and give us the feel of the real song. We don't want to sort of rely on overdrive as a crutch for inaccuracies in our playing. Now, let's get into it. So we are gonna be starting in the second shape of the minor pentatonic scale, the A minor pentatonic scale. And we are going to be targeting at the beginning the tonic note of A at the 10th fret with this movement. So nice and straightforward here, we're playing a hammer on from the eighth fret to the 10th fret. Playing that eighth fret once, hammering down to the 10th fret. If you feel comfortable to do so, add a bit of vibrato here, just to breathe some life into that note and kind of sweeten things up a little bit. We're then gonna repeat that exact idea after a short pause. So we're gonna go like this. And then we use that as a kind of launch pad into this next kind of quicker idea where there is more movement. So we've just done those two hammer-ons to that 10th fret on the, on the B string, the note of A, and then we're gonna do this. So we're gonna hit that eighth fret on the B string twice, We're then gonna take the middle finger and do a, execute quite a quick slide from the ninth fret down to the seventh fret. Like that. So what we've got so far is as follows. That movement between the ninth and the seventh fret, that is one to get into the memory because that is a movement that appears all the time in blues and blues rock playing. This is because it is a very, very popular way for players to join the first and the second shapes of the minor pentatonic scale in whichever key they're playing. It's a really elegant and kind of smooth and cool movement to connect those two areas. What we've done here is we've done that movement in reverse, moving from the ninth down to the seventh fret. Now we're firmly in the first shape of the A minor pentatonic scale. We've just got our middle finger on that seventh fret of the G string, and we've done, and we've slid down from that ninth to the seventh. The next little bit is gonna sound and look like this. So 
So here, very cool, very simple, but funky idea based around those, the D and the G strings in that first pentatonic shape. And again, this is all material that I want you to be thinking about beyond the context of this song. Well, once you've learned it and you feel comfortable with it, because these are classic ideas that appear all over the place and which you can use in your own solos and improvisations. So what we've got notes-wise here is as follows. So to begin with, we're going to play, you've just played with your middle finger there on the seventh fret. You're now going to play the fifth fret on the G string with your first finger. And you're going to push that up into a little blues curl. So just a blues curl, if you haven't encountered it, it's just an ever so slight movement of the string, just to add a little something to it. It's not a big bend or anything like that. It's just a slight little movement. And what you have to do with the blues curl is cut it off at the top. So this is where you've got to get that kind of right hand technique, which we encountered in the rhythm section, drop it onto the string so that when you hit the top of the blues curl, you kill it with a little piece of your right hand or left hand if you're left handed, but your, your picking hand. So you hit that blues curl. And the reason for doing that, by the way, is because otherwise you end up with this weird tense sound where the bend goes up and then comes down. Sounds very unsettled, like this. We don't want that. We want that groovy kind of cut, and then move on to the next thing. So, but then with the third finger, we're gonna hit the seventh fret on the G string and then back to that fifth fret for another blues curl. So when we put that on the back of what we've done from the beginning, it's as follows. We're now gonna add this little kind of quick bend into the mix here. So we're sticking very much in this shape, very much in this part of the fretboard and we're gonna execute the following idea. So it's quite a density of techniques here. We're gonna bend that seventh fret up and we're gonna let it come down as well. So three finger bend here, like that. And then without picking again, so without striking the string again with this hand, you're going to release that bend to the fifth fret. So it's kind of a bend that goes up and comes down straight into a pull off, which then resolves on that fifth fret of the G string, like this. And then to cap that phrase off, we're gonna hit with our third finger, the seventh fret on the D string, and then go back to that blues curl idea at the fifth fret of the G string. So there's quite a lot going on there. And if we put that together in the context of what we've covered so far, we've got this. One more time. So, might be a short little section there, but there is a high density of technique and ideas that you can kind of learn and get to grips with. From my perspective, some of the fundamental things to think about and, and, and recognize as ideas that you will encounter in the future are that blues curl, if you haven't sort of encountered that already. Really, really cool idea. Adds a beautiful bluesy feeling, as the name suggests, into your playing. And it also sort of develops that technique of the right hand muting. So controlling the length of your notes and your bends by dropping your, your picking hand, whether that's your right or your left, onto the strings to cut the bend. So that's a key technique that I think we, we encounter here. And the second one is that movement between the second shape and the first shape. 
So that connection highlighted in the fretboard diagrams below between here and there. <laughs> so the second shape and the first shape. That works both ways, as we'll see later in the song, and is a really, really cool sort of way of navigating through the shapes that is great to add to your repertoire. So, before moving on to the second part of this intro, take this nice and slowly, consolidate it, always focus on precision, play cleanly and precisely, do not chase the speed. As you can see in the introduction, the introduction is played a lot quicker than I played there, but don't get too hung up on the speed. The speed will come with time. Focus on precision, focus on executing these ideas cleanly. And critically, when it comes to that bend, that bend and then the release, focus on the pitch of the bend. You want to make sure that even though it's a quick bend, you're hitting that ninth fret, the pitch of the ninth fret on the G string, and you're not kind of falling short and creating a sound that is overly tense or dissonant. So really kind of focus in on those ideas and consolidate the order of the notes, how everything fits together. Once you feel comfortable with that, you can play it through without looking at the tab and you can kind of remember it. Head over to the second part of the introduction uh, where we'll dig into that little bit and we'll look at some of the similarities and some of the differences. Good luck, guys. See you over there. <laughs> 